All right, are we ready? So I'm, uh, I guess I didn't get, didn't get introduced. I'm Carl Viemar. I'm one of the cloud solutions architects at Intel in our uh, data center organization. So I got about five minutes today, and we're going to talk about something we get a lot of questions on, which is how big should my wall and DB partitions be, and how much space do I need? So what we decided to do is, since there's, since there's quite a bit of speculation and, and uh, back and forth, and also the docs give a recommendation, particular recommendation, that ends up fairly large, fairly 4%, and which ends up, when you start comparing and looking at sizing and pricing of, of Flash, that maybe, that's, maybe we uh, need a little bit less than what the docs say. So what we decided to do is, rather than guess, we decided to actually go and empirically test it. So we, we, have, we already have um, some benchmark servers and benchmark clusters set up. So we just took one of those, our existing clusters, which looks like this. Pretty standard benchmarking configuration. We did use one generation older, so you'll notice those are the Broadwell processors in there. But it is, uh, is using our 4500s and the Optane for the wall and DB. So it's, a, again, pretty standard set of, uh, pretty standard set of servers that we would benchmark against. Then what we did is it is, okay, so it is Blue Store. We did two OSDs per NVMe drive, 3x replication. We use CBT and Grafana. So you'll see the graph is from Grafana. And we used 4, uh, 4 KB to start, but we did test a range of I.O. sizes. And it is luminous, or Mimic, I'm sorry. So pretty, pretty reflective of what you might actually be using. So this is a chart. And what this shows is the, the wall size is really a function of the metadata and how much metadata is being processed and how fast. So what we did is we took that, same, that configuration with a standard 4 meg object size in Ceph, RBD. And then we just, you'll notice there's a lot of lines on there. What those are is we just went ahead and wanted to see from 4K, 8K, 16K, 32K, up to 1 megabyte of IO size. Just ran the file test through CBT to get a range and see what it looked like. Well, it turns out that about the largest, and we, I don't have it on, on here, but if you look at the, the max, was around 18, something around 18.5. KB. So we just, you know, we said, okay, we're going to take a worst case and let's set it at 20K. Let's just set a ceiling at a 20K of metadata per object. Figure we want to be a little bit conservative. So then what we did is we, starting from that, for the Rocks DB with the standard 4 meg uh, object size, 20K tet, the 20K of metadata size, turns out based on measurements, actual measurements, that it looks like around five gigabytes of metadata, uh, of metadata per OSD, one terabyte of OSD, looks like, looks like enough, to be enough. And this is based on those tests that you saw before. Now, if you compare, in the little chart I have there, if you make a comparison, the documentation says to use 4%. Now, if you choose that, if you take that number and a 40 terabyte so a 40 terabyte OSD node, which would be a reasonable size for an all flash. And remember, these are focused around all flash Ceph configurations. So 40, 60, 80 terabytes is pretty reasonable for say six, six drives, 12 OSDs, 1.6 gigabytes. So that's 1.7 terabytes of Rocks DB that you need. But if you use the, if based on the empirical testing we did, it looks more in the range of two to three to 400 gigabytes. Now, you're going to want to test that yourself. Maybe you want to recreate and replicate the testing that we did. But we found a pretty significant size difference based between the documentation and our, and our testing. And the wall, it turns out wall, you don't need much space at all for the wall. And the wall is more a function of the rate of change. So if the, if the RocksDB is a function of how much metadata is being run through the, the cache, the wall size is a function more of the rate of change, how quickly, how much do we need to buffer. So again, we thought we'd be pretty conservative, put in an 80-second buffer. So you got about 80 seconds of buffer cache and 100 megabit, gigabits per second network. Now, you know, for, us, for, for maybe a, an S3 object store or something like that, 100 gigabits is, is more probably than enough. But we found in our benchmark testing in, with all flash configurations that we can, we can push 100 gigabits per second. Through, a, through an OSD node. So we felt that was a pretty safe place to start. So it turns out, and there's some math behind here. Um, I, it did say in there we were going to show a spreadsheet, but I felt in five minutes you guys probably didn't need to look at a bunch of Excel 
cells with mouse moving around. So you can come and talk to us after, um, and we can kind of walk through some of this. But based on that, it looks like around 3,000 3, objects per second with 20K of metadata, kind of working it back, about five gigs per node, divided amongst all the OSDs. So you would take that five gig, divided by, in, our, in this case, I think we had six drives, so five gig divided by six, and then that would be how the partition you would want to create on your Optane drive. I'm not sure how I'm doing for time. Seems like five minutes seems short, but it ends up being long when you're up here. And I think that's about it, really. I mean, we didn't want to take up too much time, but this is a question we get a lot, and so we want to just make sure we had a good quantitative answer for that question, because we didn't want to guess, and it, seemed, it did seem that the numbers, it seemed they were a bit larger than what maybe we needed. When we're talking to customers and we're looking at sizing and figuring out what drives to use, you know, our, like our, for our Optane drives come in a 375, a 768, and a 1.7, right? Or 1.4 size. And so that 300 fits in nicely with, with the, uh, our sizes. Okay.